Our next presentation, moving along, um, Camille Core Chisholm is the owner of Indigo Packaging and Consulting. She is the go-to person for all of your packaging products and packaging design needs. Camille has a diverse background in packaging engineering, design, supply chain, project management, and new product introductions. Her 30 years in packaging spans a variety of industries, including food, e-commerce, technology, distribution, pharmaceutical, industrial, and automotive. Earning a master's of science and a bachelor's of science in packaging, Camille achieved a lifetime certification as a certified packaging professional in 2006. She was inducted into the IOPP College of Fellows in 2014 and earned a Six Sigma black belt in 2019. I'm also extremely proud to say that Camille is a contributor to my monthly newsletter from Print Media Center, News from the Printiverse, and she shares all about uh, packaging, obviously. Uh, you can scribe, uh, subscribe on my website. Tonight, Camille is going to discuss how the right packaging plan can make your great product even better. She's going to share how to formulate your packaging strategy, which as uh, Kirk and Adam mentioned is extremely important, uh, how to choose the right materials and navigate through the production process for product success. If you have questions, please post them in the chat. You can also stop by the Indigo Packaging and Consulting booth and ask them there or start a chat with Camille by clicking on networking and finding her profile. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the total package, Camille Core Chisholm. Hello everyone, how are you? Those are tough acts to follow, I must say. So I was, doing pretty good until I started listening to them and they got kind of nervous um, because they're awesome. Okay, so welcome Peacockers. Um, now this is the complete package session. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great, great. That's always important to check first. Um, so again, welcome to the complete package. Again, my name is Camille Corchism. Um, I myself learned a lot just now, just listening to, like I said, a tough act to follow. This has been very interesting. Um, what you're gonna hear from me is, you know, again, we had some print inspiration from Daniel, and then we enjoyed a, the people of packaging discussion with Kirk and Adam, and they talked really about that design and packaging um, function. And, you know, the shows you the importance of working with great partners. So next, we're going to wrap this up with how to think outside of the box. Um, now, let's tie all those elements that we just learned about together and make sure that we have packaging that will enhance your product. Okay, so first I wanted to know, you know, where are you on pa your packaging journey? I'm going to do a, a quick survey and, you know, kind of use that to address what we're talking about here. So, you know, what are your goals here for packaging to get out of this? Are you looking at, you know, learning more about packaging or getting future ideas on some new product packaging? So that would be group number one. Are you just curious? Um, next, are you actively seeking a packaging solution? or maybe you're trying to move away from some stock packaging that you're in, your, your product has grown, your sales have grown and you want to do something more personalized. So your second group, your trans, transformation or transforming. Or um, thirdly, are you looking at rolling out the best packaging that you have for a product, new product launch? Or maybe you just wanna start over and go back to the drawing board. Um, that would be in the please help me category. So you know, if you want, but just put in the chat. Um, where you are, group one, are you curious about packaging? You want to learn more? Number two, are you in the process of changing or transforming? Or three, you're, you're really looking for some resources and help. So like I said, just put that in the chat. And then um, I think Deb is Deborah is going to pull some of those numbers together. And we'll talk about that a little in a couple of slides. Okay, so what is the big deal about packaging? So I saw this, I was doing some research and I saw this and this made me so excited as the packaging nerd that I am. There is an article in Forbes called 2021, the year of the package. And it basically said packaging is more than a mere container. It is a recurring opportunity to hold a brand in your hand, 
packaging represents more consumer daily impressions than any other communication medium. Consider packaging as content marketing. So I think everyone here knows that already. Um, but what that to me as a packaging engineer from my background tells me is that, tells me is that packaging is everywhere. Um, it's finally getting some respect. Packaging's kind of always been like the rotten danger field of the product development world, I'll say. So if anyone told me 30 years ago that, you know, we'd walk around yelling into thousand dollar pieces of glass and we'd happily pay for water in bottles and that Forest Magazine would designate a year for packaging, I would never have believed it. But think about it, all those things I just mentioned, those tie into packaging. When people think about iPhones, they think about the packaging and how great that packaging is and what that adds to the value of that phone. Um, again, you know, people now, you know, we used to literally drink out of the water fountains, you know, or the water holes in the backyard when we played in the sprinklers as kids. Now people feel like they get water in a bottle and it's better. So, you know, these things are very important and packaging again, it's, it's everywhere. And with that being said, um, I really wanted to, you know, talk about the importance of planning. So the first question is, you know, do you have a plan? Um, and really, you know, it's very important that if you have a plan, you want to know what it is, um, make sure that it's right for what you're doing. I think that Kirk and Adam touched on that quite a bit, and you kind of see the importance of a plan from there. Um, and if, once you have the right packaging plan, it can make your product that's a great product even better. So packaging is one of those things where people look at it and they don't really notice it. It can add to the product and it can be very subliminal, subconscious. People generally don't notice packaging unless it's bad. And I think that's where what we're seeing right now with the pandemic. People are complaining because they're ordering everything online and they're getting all this packaging in and they're like, this is way too much material or the box is too big or the product is damaged. So those are all indications that people do notice the packaging when they think something's wrong. Otherwise, they take it for granted. Um, so, Deborah, I did want to ask you if you've had a chance, I know it's kind of quick, but have you had a chance to look at the survey results yet or get any sort of idea yet? Yes, I, yes, I have. Uh, most people are ones. We have a few twos and one three. Okay. Hey, with the one three, you can talk to me later. Okay. Um, okay. So that's really good to know. So again, you know, I want to talk a little bit about how to formulate your strategy and then the importance of choosing the right materials and then navigating through that production process. Um, I'm going to have some examples at the end. I want to talk about, you know, what that, you know, what some of those elements are. So you might see something and, you know, how to identify those elements as you're planning and choosing materials and navigating through. So now that we talked about concepts and now that you've you know, started your plan and you have a design context, concept, now you're ready to implement it. So let's talk about the strategy for packaging. Um, one of the things that I've seen now more commonly is the break it as you go philosophy, which that culture works really well if you're in a software development process. However, if you're looking at something like packaging, um, ice cream, for example, that could actually be catastrophic. So if you say, okay, I want to do something I've never done before. Hey, let's do something like a compostable pack for ice cream. You know, you see the one on the left, it's a pretty sleek looking package. Um, but if they say, let's do something that we've never done before and they look at compostable packaging, what if that breaks down before it gets to the final customer or if it breaks down while the customer's eating it? You know, that could be an issue. So, um, you know, right here you see with these pictures, you have two very different concepts um, based on your customer base. So you see on the left, the ice cream, you think of it's probably more high end. Um, versus the one on the right side is going to be more for a broad base of consumers. And um, 
you probably it's not as as I guess like I said fancy um people are looking for vanilla they just want vanilla ice cream they might be buying it for a family cookout and they're not really concerned about the quality the one on they know the quality will be very even they know that they can depend on that quality whatever it is it's not going to vary much whereas the one on the left side is going to be more artisanal um very specific you know high-end flavors um you're going to pay more money for it and it's going to be more indulgent so again some of the items that you start looking at when you decide on a strategy are going to be your costs um what what are your revenue goals so this is your part of this is what Kirk touched on about sitting down and understanding your brand and from a strategy of your brand, what that's going to look like. But this delves into the entire process. So once you know what that brand strategy is, you also want to look at, you know, what's your cost going to be, whether you're talking about the cost of materials, the cost for manufacturing, cost for shipping. Um, and then that's also going to tie into your revenue. You know, what do you anticipate your revenue to be? And it will probably change at some point, but you've got to have some sort of guideline because that's going to help you determine a budget for your materials. Um, looking at your product, you know, this is ice cream. There's really no room for things like damage, but, you know, some items that are maybe, um, very inexpensive. So you're going to build in damage to your strategy because you want to ship out more product, um, for example. But if you have something that's higher end, you cannot afford to have any damage. Um, you also want to look at, again, like who's your customer base? I think this ice cream example is a really good example of two different customer bases for the exact same product, right? So understand your customer base because if the, the people on the left side decided that they wanted you know sell ice cream to kids at family cookouts the package on the left may not work but let's say that they want to get into walmart you know which which way do they go on that so those are very important things to look at um next i mentioned i touched on a little bit on the cost but that's really gonna tie in for all of your packaging components. So as you sit and you build a strategy, you need to understand what are all the packaging elements. People traditionally think of the primary pack, which is what I'm showing here as your packaging, but it includes your, your carton, your lid, any internal plastic sheeting or paper sheeting that's a seal for that food product for example, for this one. Then you have your secondary packaging, which could be a box or could be a wrap, whatever that outer pack is for this pack that's gonna go on the shelf. And then that may go into a shipping container that's gonna probably get stretch wrapped and somehow that whole pallet load is going to get secured. And then it's gonna go on a pallet. That will ship on a truck for a large volume, something like the ice cream on the right. But you might be looking at, you know, smaller, you might be delivering to um, high end restaurants, or you, you may be looking at stores that are, you know, higher end, we have plum market here, plum market here, you can go and actually get, I'm in Michigan, you can get um, champagne from a vending machine at this market. So it's very high end, you may see something like this and that particular, you know, this type of ice cream on the left in a store like that. But the way that you're shipping it out is going to look completely different. So it could be a smaller pack. It may not be on a pallet. It may just be in a box and that box is going to get delivered on a smaller truck. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was product protection. So as you build your strategy, you want to look at how are you protecting your product? So food, for example, you know, something that melts, how are you going to keep it cold? Something that's fragile, like an electronic component. What are the requirements? Does it have electrostatic um, sensitivity? If it gets near spa sparks or shocks, is it, you know, is water going to damage it? Um, is, is this a product that if it's a food product, is it going to pick up flavor? You know, you get things like ice cream or, you know, fat and products with high fat content like chocolate that will pick up the flavor. So 
do you want your chocolate ice cream to taste like mint because it's right next to, it's getting shipped out with a big pack of mint something or other so those are things that you need to look at when you start talking about protecting your product again if it's something fragile like um, electronics a phone or a computer you know how do you protect that so you've got to build that into you know going back to the cost and the budget you have to build that in and then things that also will affect your cost could be your transportation. Are you shipping via truck, full truck loads? Are you shipping small parcel? You know, are you going to, um, you know, third party company that's packing and shipping for you? Those things can all affect your cost that you should consider. And you should write all those things down. And you may not have the answer in the beginning, but your packaging partners, those are things you want to make sure you fill in the blanks as you go along. Um, I mentioned the supply chain. So your supply chain for ice cream is going to look ex completely different from your supply chain for a phone um, because, you know, you're looking at cold chain versus a phone. Probably the only thing that would be temperature sensitive in that phone is going to be your battery. If you have a lithium battery, that's going to be sensitive. So you have to look at those sorts of things. Um, another thing that's important is going to be your forecast. So Forecasting can be difficult, but if you have a forecast, even if it changes and you have it in there, you can you can always shift things around and reaccommodate as your forecast changes. But if you don't start with the forecast and you start trying to buy packaging, maybe you forecast you're going to sell ten thousand of these, and then you end up selling you know one thousand in the first year. If you've done a forecast and you looked at your, your supply chain and your cost, you can say what am I gonna do with that other 9,000 pieces of packaging? Or if you change your brand, so this goes back to what Kirk and Adam said, if you change your brand halfway through, now you've gone from the pack on the right to the pack on the left, you are now getting rid of a lot of packaging. But um, if you do forecasting, you have a strategy, you can plan for you know, when you're going to make that transition. Say, so when I get to a certain volume, I want to move into a different pack. So that would really help you limit how many you buy. So when you start negotiating and buying packaging, you'd be, you could be really certain that you have that on your list. Um, again, I gave the example of ice cream, you know, your, your, it's affected by temperature, your flavor, your ID for your branding. How are you identifying this? Is this something that's going to be sold in a Walmart or is this something that's going to be sold in a plum market? Um, that supply chain, we're looking at cold chain, comparing your consumer bases, you know, what does your consumer look like? Because that can impact your packaging a lot. Um, and if you plan to change at some point, you, you definitely want to build that in and make sure that your branding and marketing people are involved in that. Um, then again, you know, your product, even if you change your branding, some of those elements aren't going to change. So again, you know, the ice cream, it's cold. You have to make sure that you manage the cold chain for that supply chain. And your flavor is always important too. So those things don't change, but your volumes, your distribution system, the cost based on your those items, um, how you manufacture it, and the cost and your consumer expectations are going to change based on the type of packaging that you have. So next, um, I just want to touch a little bit on development. So, you know, you, things that are important in development, you've got things like your functionality of your packaging. You know, what is it going to do as you're looking at, as Adam said, protection from a packaging engineer standpoint, protection is key. No matter what you're doing a package for, you always start with protection. However, packaging engineers also understand that you are also looking at preserving the product and sometimes you're preserving the brand. You also put some promotion in there. You're promoting the product or the brand. And then you're also providing, um, you know, whether it's um, packaging that displays or dispenses, there may be some other function that that packaging needs to have, or it may be something reusable. Like for example, you look at these packs, it's all one system. 
hear everything. You could tell it's all with the same brand, but they each serve different functions. So it looks like, you know, with that, you've got some, you know, reusable materials in there. You've got some recyclable materials, but those are really things that you want to look at as you develop your packaging. How do you want this to look? And do you want it to be seamless or are you going to have, you know, various items that are, you know, from, from different brands? Um, mention again the budget. This is where when you talk about your materials, your budget is really important. So once you start really understanding what materials you're using, uh, that can tie in things like sustainability. You know, once you understand what your plan for sustainability is, what's important, what means what sustainability means to you, then you can start really determining what materials you're using. So you've got things that protect. So let's talk about the electronics or a phone. Your packaging is definitely going to protect your product. Um, you may be preserving some of the items. So your phone packaging is going to hold things that you might want to refer to in the future. You might, you know, use your power cord or you might need to reset your phone. You've got your key in there and you go back and you can find your key. Um, you may buy headphones to go with it, and you may come. It may come with multiple headphones in that pack. You want to be able to go back and you know have these headphones if you switch the size for whatever reason, or you know get a, another one. You know that those headphones, those inserts are going to be as good as they were the day that you bought them. So this preserved when you go back for whatever reason. Um, again, that packaging can have branding and to promote it. So if you're looking at that phone packaging again, you, you will see some branding or logos so people, you know, know what it is, the packaging, some of it's considered iconic and people recognize what that packaging is for, you know, years later. Um, the budget, again, like I said, that going back to the materials, it's extremely important because if you're using something that's, let's say, it's sustainable, it's a new material that's considered to be sustainable and it meets all of your sustainability requirements for carbon footprint, um, end of life, reuse, reduce, recycle, or upcycle, whatever it is that you determine is most important um, for sustainability. It, it may, you may end up with materials that cost more than you initially planned for. So that will help you make a decision on, do you want to go that route or do you want to go to that different pack that costs more later when you hit a certain revenue number, which goes back to your forecasting early on in your strategy. Um, Kirk and Adam also touched on prototyping. So it's very important that you do mock-ups. Um, Prototypes are important because you can see that concept, you see what it looks like, you want to make sure things are right again, like the print, maybe your direction. I've had boxes where people did printing and I cut out the little print card and fold it and taped it and everyone's laughing at me, but the print was upside down on one of the panels and no one caught that until I actually folded it and put it into a little mini box and passed around and said, you know, here we go. And so we're back to, you know, making sure that the, the printer and the manufacturer of that box, you know, was able to correct it. Um, but that's an example of where prototyping is important. Prototyping is also important when you start looking at testing. So you want to know with testing, does your package do what you think it's going to do? So is it going to protect your product? So if you take a phone and you we do a standard three foot drop test, that's pretty standard in packaging for electronics. You do this drop test and your phone isn't going to break. So I know everyone, the first thing people do when they buy their phone is they go out and they get a phone cover. But think about what the packaging had to, how easy it is for that maybe, it may be for that, pack, for that phone to break once you get it in your hand. But think about all the, everything that it went through to get to you it was on a truck it the boxes that it was it was carried was handled was lifted by fork trucks those pallets were dropped it got put on shelves and it didn't break but the minute you take it out the box and you walk down the hallway and you trip it, it you drop it it's broken so the testing can be very important um i'll go back to the example of the ice cream so you want to make sure that the product 
stays cold. If you have ice cream, you want to make sure it stays cold in the packaging that you have in whatever conditions you have. So you may assume that's going to stay in a freezer. Does it stay frozen? And do you are you dealing with things like crystals or freezer burn? Those things are very important. You want to make sure that you test to make sure your package does protect in whatever environment that you're shipping and distributing and warehousing it in. Um, you also want to do a proven when you start talking about manufacturing. You want to make sure that this package can actually be run because sometimes it can be run, sometimes it can't be run, or maybe that it, it needs some tweaks, um, especially if you're looking at larger volume items, especially as your volume grows if you're new and as you start growing, you're usually going to either pack it out on some equipment that you bought or going to a co-packer, whatever way you go, those machines tend to run in higher volumes and there's not a lot of room for variation. So it's really important that you do provens for your packaging. Um, prototyping first, well, you know, you can do things like ship testing and some slow speed testing. You can also see if you're hand packing things, how easy it is to hand pack and if you have to make any changes or any modifications during that process. And then the ship test. So you can do lab testing and you can see, is this product going to fail? So I mentioned that three foot drop. There are other tests that are done in the lab that imitate what it looks like in shipping. However, the it's going to tell you, is this going to completely fail or not? most of the time. You can get an indication of whether you need to make some ch major changes or not. But the real test, you always want to do a shipment test. So even if it's taking your product and shipping it to someone in another city and then having them open it. So you, you want them to, do you want to do an unboxing before your customers unbox? I'll put it that way. And then make any changes as you see necessary. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about execution. I'm just going to show you a little bit of this video because I, I thought it was really interesting. It kind of talks about, you know, what she does to get these 200 order orders packed. And it's clear that she really hadn't really thought about execution as she's going through this. You can probably already tell from the look on her face. Right here, I have some of these polymers. Was held at gunpoint. Hey, why do I want to cry? I'm okay with that. These are going to be sent out tomorrow. I'm going to be. So, I'm so excited. Okay, so you get the idea. She's just kind of all over the place. You know, what is she doing? Um, you could tell that she hasn't thought about. Um, you know, her budget. Um, she hasn't thought about what is she going to do when she packing more than 20 at a time she's got 200 to pack and she's ready to cry so this she's probably in need of some help um and she probably would have really done well having a team of packaging packaging partners and a team to help her with this um she's i'm going to assume that she's you know in order to be on time and in budget that she has not um, negotiated any of her packaging costs. She's probably buying things, stock packaging online, um, whatever's available. Again, she's not following a budget. Um, things that I talked about too would be that, you know, with the team for packaging, part of the packaging engineer's job, you know, things that when I'm looking at products and projects like this, you know, I want to anticipate things like, you know, is there, could there be damage and how do we avoid this um, chaos when it comes to manufacturing? You know, chaos and, and engineering just don't go together, right? So, you know, we're, we're looking ahead at the strategy when you start talking about what's the volume? Can, is this something we do by hand? When do we ramp up from doing manufacturing by hand to going to some other facility to do this or getting more people? How do we do this? Um, you know, who are your suppliers? Are your suppliers partners? Are your suppliers part people that, you know, you maybe don't have a really strong relationship with and they may not really understand your product. So it's also important that your supplier understands your product. Um, next, you know, testing and approval. 
I am going to just make a wild guess that there probably wasn't a whole lot of testing going on. And testing, another opportunity for um, testing is to be able to approve your packaging before you go into full scale production. Um, next, you, you wanna make sure that you're ordering your packaging based on your forecast. So you can better gauge you know, how much your packaging costs at this level, if you're gonna buy more packaging, um, more than a minimum, you know, what does that do, you, do to your cost? And does it make sense based on your forecast? Are you going to reuse up that packaging or are you gonna have to pay extra for a warehouse? You know, those are just some things that you can look at. Um, you wanna also make sure that you're meeting lead times for your packaging. <laughs> okay. So move on to that, the screaming packaging person. But uh, I wanna talk about a little bit more about execution. So I mentioned packaging partners and you heard Daniel, Adam and Kirk talk about some of the elements that we go through. But you know, having a packaging partner, it many times people consider it a luxury or it might even be unnecessary, um, but it can prevent failure to launch. I'm not going to say that that video that I just showed you was exemplary of failure to launch or an example of it, but it, it might be. So when I started my firm, for example, you know, and working in corporate America for 30 years, I saw that, you know, there's a need to work on the entire process for packaging. So when you're looking at, you know, the packaging design, um, sales or purchasing, and even managing that whole process through to production, you know, it, it's really important to look holistically at that entire process. Um, and when you start looking at the specifically production and going into the distribution phase, once you've concepted, you've come up with your packaging, got the type of materials that you want based on the importance of protection and what your product is and what the functionality is, you know, you, you basically are going to have four major routes for production and distribution. So one, you could have, you know, someone on site, you could have a li liaison that's your packaging specialist and that packaging specialist is going to work between departments, whether it's purchasing or engineering or manufacturing, your packaging specialist can work with that. Um, you might also decide once you get into production that you want to do everything on site. And that means you're going to have personnel requirements that are very, you know, manual or dealing with the equipment. Um, next, you'll have, you know, you could look at co-packing. So some people really like co-packing because it takes a lot of the, you know, work and thought out of it. But many new, specifically new products and brands, they will shy away from co-packers initially because they don't want that exposure, especially if it's a new product and they're trying to get a foothold in the market. And they also may not have as much control over what the packaging, you know, what the results of the packaging are. And then your, your next option is going to be like a third party logistics um, process. So you, that's something where you might look at packing and shipping. So they might pack the product out and they'll also ship it out. Um, they may even have, a you know, a consultant or an engineer on site that they'll do things, you know, seamlessly from start to finish. Um, they're maybe more experienced and you're, you're going to pay for those services. Um, you're, you're look, they'll look at your inventory, they'll look at your packaging, they'll pack out for you, they can do deliveries. And it, sometimes they'll even do customer service. So that's really the next step of moving away. You'll see that probably more with, you know, larger companies. You see that with Amazon as an example. And, you know, regardless of that, you know, here are some of the aspects that you want to consider when you start looking at execution. So, you know, talk about packaging partners, you know, who are they and is everyone on the same page once you have your strategy in place? Are your packaging partners on the same page and working towards your goals? Um, so your suppliers are also important when it comes to execution. Are they working for you and providing the packaging that you have envisioned? Are they able to manufacturing the packaging that you envisioned? And then um, you want to make sure that they're they're really getting that for you. Are they just selling you whatever product they have and, and shoehorning you in and making sure that you get what they have? 
And then it's also important to negotiate your pricing. Knowledge is power. So if you understand you know, what your options are out there and what the different volumes, um, how that impacts your pricing, that's really important and you can really help stick to your budget. And then another really, really important thing that people um, need to make sure they include is understanding the lead time. So that goes back to your strategy when you start looking at, you know, what's your time to launch? Um, you want to make sure that as you go through this, you look at your lead times because people are can people are surprised sometimes that the lead time to develop packaging can be just as long as the lead time to develop some of your products. So keep that in mind as well. Make sure that you're always asking what lead times are for your packaging. And then approval is important as well. You want to make sure that you your packaging is approved and whatever you're moving to is what you are looking at. Um, I, next, I just I have some examples here. And I just want you to look at the, you know, these different examples and what example these examples would have on things like the volume, the cost, the creativity of your packaging, what that does for the manufacturability of it. Um, does it protect your product or do you have to do something else to protect your product? And then, you know, what does this look like in a supply chain? So the first one is a cookie packaging that looks like an oven, very creative. Um, probably expensive. I'm going to assume this is done by hand and I'm going to assume so from a volume standpoint, it's probably low volume, high cost, um, hand produced, like I said, very creativity, very creative. Um, from a manufacturing standpoint, it looks like it's something that your packaging supplier or packaging supplier could make. But it, it also is since this is going to be hand loaded, it could be um, from an internal manufacturing standpoint to get this product out the door for the product person it can be it could be very complex um from a protection standpoint this probably is going into another pack this is not something you may see this on a shelf in a restaurant maybe a display case in the restaurant but this is not something that's going to ship out at, alone and the supply chain is probably pretty complex. I'm going to assume that these are, this is going to a restaurant, it's hand delivered or it's hand delivered to a um, grocery store like a plum market. The next one, you have a, a shoe pack and it's really cute. I liked it, I thought it was very creative. It's got shoelaces in there, which tells me that from a manufacturability standpoint, it is, has to be, I'm sure it's done by hand, which is going to increase the cost. Uh, again, because this looks like a handmade, um, very um, non, a very manual process, it's probably um, a low volume as well. And it, it looks like it probably does protect the product fairly well. Um, it may end up in another pack just because of um, dirt. It may not stay clean, so there may be an, another pack for that. And that supply chain, um, it's hard to tell where this is going, but I'm going to assume that the supply chain is probably going to um, shoe stores that are either regional or probably even national. So it's probably sitting in a warehouse. Next, we've got these, um, it looks like some sort of a drink product. It's, it looks like it's a German, something in Germany, but you know, the colors are very, the graphics are great. It, People initially may see this in a very traditional package. This is one of the most traditional packages that you see is the gable top milk carton. However, they use the print to promote it and to draw some creativity and some interest to it. But from a volume standpoint, they can probably run, this is a very high volume item. Um, it's probably lower cost. They may pay extra for the print, but they can make up for that with volume and the fact that it's a very standard pack. And this can go into pretty much any supply chain that's already taking drinks or especially milk carton type drinks or even bottles. Um, and I'm sure it protects the product really well. It preserves it. It looks like it's probably refrigerated. And it, it probably, it, even though it's probably the least creative looking of these packages, it's probably the most manufacturable. Um, the one at the bottom, that one, it, I put this up because I 
used to, my first job out of school was packaging for McDonald's. And they were always looking for, you know, can we do a package that you can put in your cup holder? Something like this. Very creative, great. One of the biggest challenges back then was manufacturability of it. So, you know, they're buying really high volume so the, and they could negotiate a great price, but the equipment and the technology to make something like this on a larger scale, to the scale that they needed was not there. That was decades ago, so I'm sure that's something that's easier to do now. And then the last one, I just thought this one was very, very cool. Um, obviously, this one to me looks like it's something that is used for um, promotions. Um, you have this box with really, really nice graphics with map on it. And then the shoe is at the box. So it looks like this is something that you take the lid off and you can actually display that shoe in the store setting. And then when someone's ready to buy the, sh the, the shoes, they just put it right back in the box and it's right there and it ships, you know, the person can walk out the door with it and it's gonna ship this way protected. So I'm going to say that this one is probably a medium sized volume, somewhat specialty, but because of the brand, they probably can negotiate prices um, based and they can leverage some of the volume of some of their other shoe boxes to get a better price. It's very creative. Um, manufacturability is probably pulled from their main production line and they probably do some manual processes to it and protect the product. Um, and then from a supply chain standpoint, they can leverage the existing supply chain that they have. Okay, that was a mouthful. So um, now I'm open to any questions. So Deborah, I don't know if we have any questions at this point, and I'm just going to put up my last slide, which has my contact information for anyone. Yes, please put your contact information. Uh, People were, were uh, there are no actual questions, just a lot of comments, uh, um, really um, just echoing every, everything you said. Um, you know, it's so interesting because um, there's so much that goes into a package and um, it's only understanding and learning from people like you that we really can, uh, you know, uh, uh, bring that into how we manifest things to life. Most people on this side of the screen, myself included, we have to manifest ideas into life and the other half of the people on the platform have to produce those ideas and bring them into life. But without people like you, a lot of that doesn't happen. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge and the I'm into that coffee cup. I just want to tell you, I wish, where has that been all my life? Um, yeah. Everyone should visit Camille in the uh, Indigo packaging booth on the platform. And um, if you could just uh, stop sharing your screen, that would be awesome. And I'm going to wrap up the event. So uh, Camille, uh, Kirk, you're still here. And Danielle, um, if you want to, um, did you want to say anything else, Camille? Um, just thank you for having me and allowing me to do my packaging data dump. You know, I could talk about this forever, so I appreciate it. This was, I had fun. I hope everyone else did. They did. They really liked it. When you go into the platform and see the comments, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll like it. And um, I, I think uh, before the, uh, they, Kirk and Adam would talk to, spoke about chorizo. Then we were talking about mangoes and beer and you gave everyone dessert with the ice cream. So it, it worked out on the platform. People were very happy. 